Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained, and welcome to my next installment, How Well Do You Know? And today I want to look at magnetic or electromagnetic induction. As always, in these questions, with all multiple choice questions, I encourage you to pause the video, try the question yourself, and then listen to the explanation afterwards. So here's our first question, and we have a light rod that has a coil of insulated copper wire fixed at one end and is pivoted at the other end. The result is a pendulum which is free to swing back and forth, and the magnet is placed underneath this pendulum, and the arrangement is shown in the diagram. The pendulum is pulled back and then allowed to swing. Which of the following would case the pendulum to come to rest most quickly? Is it replacing the magnet with a st stronger one, shorting the pendulum, replacing the rod with a heavy one, or connecting the ends of a coil by a piece of copper wire? So let's have a look at these responses. Now, what we have here is a coil. This coil is going to be swung back and forth through a magnetic field. So it's going to be experiencing a change of flux. And you should be aware, of course, that an EMF is always generated because it experiences a change of flux. But the other thing to understand too is that this negative symbol here relates to Lenz's law. And Lenz's law says basically that any induction occurring or EMF will be such that it produces a polarity that opposes the motion. And that is aligned with the law of conservation of energy. But of course, for us to produce nice eddy currents as they have a changing flux, you need to have material that allows for those currents to form lovely circles. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the responses. We've got this swinging through and it says, first replace the magnet with a stronger one. Well, that may increase the actual magnetic field, but because the coil is made out of copper, this may not produce a huge amount of change of flux in this coil. So I would argue that this is not really the most strongest response, but it is a possible response, so we'll keep it in mind. The second one says shortening the pendulum. Now, what does shortening the pendulum do? Well, if you shorten the pendulum, this is going to swing faster. Now, swinging faster is a good thing because that means we have a greater change of flux and you might get some polarity occurring that causes it to slow down. But in fact, it will also move it further away from the magnet, so therefore negating it. C says replacing the rod with a heavier rod. Well, it makes no difference because of the fact that if it's heavier, it's simply going to swing with the same rate. So that's not going to make a big difference at all. The last one I want to discuss, it says connect the ends of the coil by a piece of copper wire. That means if I connect some wire across here, any eddy currents that are produced here will now be able to completely flow in a circuit. So you're going to get a maximum eddy current generated here. That of course will produce a magnetic field. And as Lenz's law has stated, that magnetic field will oppose the one that creates it. So for example, if I have a North Pole over here and a South Pole down here, as this moves down, we're going to produce an eddy current here that will generate to be a North Pole initially over here that will repel here. And then of course, as this coil moves away, it'll produce a South Pole over here so that it attracts it and brings it back. So in, this, in other words, it'll slow it down. So A sort of is possible a possible answer if we want airy currents, but the fact that, that this is an open circuit means you're not going to get much of eddy currents generating here in the first place. So the correct answer is D. The coil of an AC generator rotates at a constant rate in a magnetic field as shown. Which of the following diagrams represents the curve of induced EMF against position? Okay, I hope you had a chance to look. And again, we need to understand that an EMF is all about the change of flux, the negative change of flux with respect to time. Now, what is flux? Well, flux is, of course, how many magnetic field lines are passing through the loop. So in point P, what you can see here is that flux here is actually equal to zero. We have no magnetic field lines here at this particular point. At Q, we have a maximum flux, and then of course, zero and maximum and zero again. But it's not the flux 
that's important. It's the change of flux. And so although we have here no flux, the change of flux here is actually at a maximum. So therefore, and this position over here, we should have a maximum change of flux and therefore a non-zero value for EMF. That means automatically A is excluded because it starts at zero here and C is excluded because it starts at zero here. So we clearly have two possible answers because we have a maximum flux here. Now, because we don't know the actual direction in terms of its motion, therefore this could be positive or negative, but both answers here are positive. So it's clearly one of those answers. The next thing to understand, of course, this is about how many times this rotates. So P to Q to R is 180 degrees. And then from to S and T, we have a complete circle or a complete loop. So we have 360 degrees. Since it rotates, therefore, only once, we should only get one complete cycle going on here. Here we have two cycles going on here. Therefore, D is incorrect. Therefore, B is our only answer. Two couple of rings lie in the same plane as shown. An increasing current flows in the clockwise around the outer ring. What happens to the inner ring? Well, this is fairly easy. And the, again, the important thing to remember is Lenz's law. You're always going to get a change that opposes what changes it. So the first thing to understand is that if you're going to count a current in the outer ring, in the clockwise direction, as shown here, you're definitely going to get a current in the inner ring in the other direction. So as a result, what we have clearly is, is that the inner one has got to be anti-clockwise. Therefore, that excludes A and that excludes C. The question is, is, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, it's about rate of change of flux, of course. So if you increase the outer current, then automatically means that the inner one also increases as well. And so therefore, a increasing anti-clockwise current flows. B is excluded, D is the correct answer. Another coil in a magnetic field. A coil of wire is in a uniform magnetic field between magnets and the coil of wire is rotated about an axis. Which of the following diagrams is the magnetic flux through the coil greatest? Well, again, magnetic, if we have a coil such as this, then the magnetic field lines are the ones that are passed through that coil at right angles to that coil. I always liken it to uh, the idea of holding a net in a rainstorm. If you want our rain to fall through the net, then you have to hold that net at 90 degrees to the rain. And so with that in mind, that there's going to be no magnetic field lines passing through this loop, so B is definitely excluded. We have some magnetic field lines passing through A and through C, but it is par only at an angle that is not 90 degrees, so you're only going to get a limited number of magnetic field lines running through the loop. And so therefore C and A are excluded. Clearly, D has the largest number of lines through that loop, and so therefore, it's the correct answer. A heavy copper split ring is attached by a light insulating rod to a pivot to form a pendulum. A region of uniform magnetic field is present as shown. As the pendulum swings from position 1 to position 2, the induced EMF in the ring is measured between X and Y. So again, what is going to occur here? Well, the important thing here again is about change of flux over time, negative, of course, that negative, of course, refer relates to Lenz's law. It'll always be something that opposes the motion, which means as this enters the field in here, you're going to get an eddy current. Now, which way is that eddy current? It actually isn't important in this case to understand with this answer, but we're going to do it nonetheless. We have our magnetic field lines basically entering into the board or into the page or into the computer screen. And if you can imagine it, that means our um, North Pole is basically on our side of the screen and the South Pole is on the other. 
Now, as this coil therefore rotates in, we want to generate a north that is also on the outside here. Why? Because we want to oppose the actual motion. It's moving in this way. So we want a north also to be generated on the outside. Now, if you grab the coil with your fingers uh, and your right hand, and you point your thumb to where you want the North Pole to be, you're going to hold your hand in such a way that your thumb is pointing towards you. And if that is the case, then your rest of your fingers arc in that direction. And that is the direction of the current. So in this case, the current is going to be in this direction. Now it is split, but you're definitely going to get a bit of a blip as there is some motion of current. Of course, the electrons are flowing in the other direction, but nonetheless, you have an EMF, a potential difference between X and Y. When it is in this position, you're going to have no change of flux here. So as a result, you will get no actual EMF generated in this section here. In the outer section, because of the fact that we still have our North Pole basically towards you, and the South, of course, is inside the screen or board, then what we want is a south to be generated on our side. Why? Because now it's moving away and you want to produce a force that resists that. So you want an attractive force. So as a result, you're going to get a current that is in the opposite direction momentarily as it leaves. That's really important. You're going to get an opposite effect. If you look at the responses, only a is the possible response. We have a response in one direction and a response in the other direction. This, this, and this all run counter to my explanation. So hopefully that has helped you understand why it is A. The graph shows variation in magnetic flux through a coil with time. Which graph best represents the corresponding induced EMF in the coil? Well, again, EMF, it's been said a few times, is equal to the negative flux over time. And the way I like to think of it is that it is actually the negative derivative of flux. So if you clearly see here, we've got rate of change of flux, you could actually argue that the derivative of flux with respect to time is this formula here. That means what we have for the EMF graph, you should always have the slope of your flux graph, but it's negative. So with that in mind, you can see that the flux is here as zero, but the slope is at a maximum. So the induced EMF will be at a maximum in this case, but it must be a negative value. That best corresponds to this point over here. So, so far we've already established that D is the answer because at this point you have maximum change of flux and therefore automatically A and C are excluded. But let me go a bit further. What is the slope up here? Well, the rate, the, the flux is maximum, but the slope is zero. Well, that of course corresponds to that point over here. The slope here is a negative slope. Our flux is zero. But it's a negative slope, but the rate of change of flux, although is negative, the EMF is the negative of that, so it becomes a positive slope. Well, that corresponds to this point. I can continue on, of course, but hopefully you can see that D is our answer. The kind of a speaker is pushed so that the coil moves in the direction shown. Which of the rows of the table correctly identifies the behavior of the speaker and the direction of the current through the conductor? Well, we are moving this coil in this magnetic field. And so as a result, this is all about generating an EMF. And that's what this whole video is about. So automatically, C and D are excluded as their responses because our speaker is not acting like a motor. But the question is, is how do you de determine the current? Now I teach my students the left hand rule, and that is if you use your left hand for induction, then as if you use your palm as the direction of motion of the wires, and your fingers as the direction of the magnetic field, then your thumb will represent the direction of the conventional current. Now some of you have always used your right hand, and of course you use your right hand for the motor effect, and of course your fingers, again, are the magnetic field lines, your thumb is a current, 
and your palm is the force that the wire experiences. If you use your right hand for induction, the important thing to consider there is, is that the fingers still remain the magnetic field lines and your palm represents the direction of motion. Your thumb now represents the flow of electrons. Okay, so it's important that you understand the distinction because conventional current and electron flow are in the opposite direction. In either way, let's work out what's going on here. Well, first of all, we have magnetic field lines, which in, let's say, at this top section are heading downward. So we've got magnetic field lines going down. The wires here are obviously going in and out of the page, and we have the direction of motion of these wires heading in that direction. So try using your left hand or your right hand, if ever what you want to do, and I'm going to use my left hand, using my left hand and pointing my fingers down and the direction of motion is towards the left, my thumb is now pointing towards me. So therefore the current is current, remember left hand is using conventional current, is now coming out of the page at this point. And if I continue that along, they will be going into the page at that point. That means the current is actually flowing down that direction, across that direction, and back up that direction. With that in mind, of course, the direction of the current becomes x to y, and therefore my answer is A. Now again, if you used your right hand, you're going to have electron flow going in the opposite direction. But note the distinction, it's electron flow, conventional current flows in the opposite direction. The diagram shows a magnet moving upward into a coil. Which row of the table correctly identifies the direction of the induced current as viewed from the top and the direction of the magnetic field inside the coil? Okay, so what we have here is a south is put in and that means automatically as you push the south upward in that direction, you're going to produce a magnetic field due to the EMF, due to the current flowing through here, that will pose that motion. So I'm going to create a south down here and a north up here. That will help us determine the direction of the current. Now again, because of the fact that I have my north up here, my south down here, then my thumb, if I grab this with my right hand, then my thumb pointing always to the north end of my coil, my fingers represent the direction of the current, and that means the current is going to be going, at least from this edge, in that direction. Now with that in mind, if we look this from a top perspective, what's going on? Well then my current is going in that direction and in that direction, so what we have here is an anti-clockwise direction, so that therefore excludes C and includes D. Now, what are the magnetic field lines doing? Well, of course, the magnetic field lines are, of course, going around like so. And of course, I leave the North Pole and enter the South Pole. But it's important to understand that through the core, the magnetic field lines run from South to North because it completes that loop. So looking from our top perspective, we're going to expect to see our magnetic field lines coming out of the page. So in that case, we have the magnetic field direction going upward, and so therefore B is the answer. Well, I hope that's helped you understand induction a little better. Please like and share, and if you want to see more of my videos, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.